All right, well, welcome back, everybody. Ironman, we're glad that you're here with us again to start our new series that we're gonna be going through on being fully committed. I hope you had a great summer. It's been a long time uh, since we've met. Um, gosh, I can't even remember the last time we made a video recording. I think it was in the spring sometime. But I hope you had a great summer. I did, uh, and that's what led to uh, the topic that we're gonna be going through for the next eight weeks. When I was in, I was in Northern California staying at my uh, friend's cabin with my family up in, uh, up near Lake Tahoe area. We, we stayed at this beautiful place in the Sierra Nevada, um, you know, mountains and woods and pine trees and everything all around us, but we had no Wi-Fi, we had no uh, cell coverage. It was just super rustic and it was gorgeous and I read a lot. And I knew I was gonna read a lot just because I've been there before and I know that's one of the things I like to do while I'm there. Um, so I was praying ahead of time that God would show me, um, you know, where this Ironman group should go this, this uh, semester or this term. So this is where we are. We're going to be going through First and Second Kings, but today we're specifically looking at Psalm 119 uh, and what it means to be fully committed. So if, if we hear the word fully committed, what, you know, what comes to mind? And that's what we're going to talk about today, just to give you the basis for what the rest of the series is going to be like. Well, what got my attention, I was going through one of those a year, uh, you know, Bible in a year, chronologically, uh, large print edition these days because I can't read without glasses on and all that. But it says um, in Second Chronicles 16.9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. So I looked at that and I thought, man, this is, this is such a great promise from, from God. But... What does it mean uh, to be fully committed to him? And I started reading the rest of the, I started slowing down actually, because when I am reading, um, you know, the Bible in a year, like many of you guys have done, you, you try to race through it. You're playing catch up. If you're like me, you're two or three weeks behind the whole time. So I, and then I started thinking, man, I better slow down here. Maybe God's got something for me here as far as what it means to be fully committed. And the books of first and second Kings are full of, uh, people who are fully committed and it's full of people who are not committed at all and some that are partially committed like Solomon and some of the other kings that did both good and bad. So uh, today let's start in and let's take a look at this. So Psalm uh, 119 has several attributes that we want to uh, that we want to look at of what it means to be fully committed as men. So I'm going to read you a list of these things. These are just things that were repetitive throughout Psalm 119. We're not going to cover all of Psalm 119. That's a long chapter, probably the longest in the whole Bible. But it says this. It says, we are to be blameless. We're, it says, keep their feet from evil. Keep and delight in God's laws. Uh, we're faithful and steadfast. We're always learning. We hate uh, every wrong path. Um, we have great reverence for God. We have great fear for God. We're willing to praise God at all times. Uh, we avoid evil. Um, we have reverence for God. We pray for wisdom and we exhibit humility and we're passionate for God and for other people. And as I, I looked at that, I also started thinking about uh, Proverbs 6. You know, if we see all the things that God wants us to do, we have to look at this because this is the stuff that God hates. I'm going to read this for you from Proverbs chapter 6, starting in verse 16. It says, There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. These are all important things. If we're going to call ourselves committed to God and fully commit to God, we need to do certain things and we need to act certain ways and we need to be all in. So when you think of being fully committed, some of you guys have been athletes before. Some of you still are athletes. To be the best, you know, to win the gold medal. Let's just take a look at that. Let's, have you ever read about what Michael Phelps used to have to do to win his gold? The training regiment that he was on was unbelievable. Um, morning, night, swimming miles and miles of laps, the things that he had to eat, the things that he couldn't eat. He was completely committed uh, to winning those. And then, you know, he got pushed to, to try to do one more Olympic run. You know, he'd already been in like five Olympics or something like that. And he's like, I just can't do it. I, can't, I don't have that commitment level anymore. And who can blame him when you have to put your whole life 
into it. I want to read this for you from 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. And it's, it's talking about the need for self-discipline. It says this, it says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not, uh, that will not last, but we do it to a, for a crown that will last forever. Okay, I want to stop there. I'm not going to read the whole part. But when we get into this, when we're talking about being fully committed, this, you know, we, are, we are, have to be all in. You know, you're, the, the only way you're going to get benefits is to be all in. Um, the past six months, I have been on a journey with my health that has not been fun. I've had to go to multiple doctors trying to figure out what's going on with my stomach. Uh, a lot of issues there. Certain foods I've discovered bother me now that didn't used to bother me. When I was a, you know, growing up, just like my 14-year-old son, I could eat anything. didn't matter. But now, for some reason, as I get older, uh, certain things bother me. And I've, you know, we've figured out what those are. And I've got a list of things from my doctor of things I can eat and things that I can't eat. When I'm fully committed to that list, I feel great. I, I feel wonderful. I feel like a new man. When I cheat... Okay, when I, when I just eat maybe one of those things, or I drink a soda, which I'm not supposed to have, just because it's, you know, I'm just in the mood for one, you know, I don't feel good the rest of the day. Uh, you know, and so if I go all off, like, man, I'm taking the day off, I'm taking the night off, I'm going to eat everything, you know, that I want to eat, I pay for it, and I paid for it a couple weeks ago, and it took me a full week to literally get back on my feet. Um, and it's like that with us, we have to stay so committed if we're in, we need to be in because when we not, when we're not, the blessings aren't going to be there, and we're not going to be running the race uh, like we should be. So let's start taking a look at some of these verses, specifically uh, verse nine uh, of Psalm 119 says, "How can a young person stay pure on the path to purity by living according to your word?" So they're purposeful in their purity. Men who are fully committed are purposeful with their purity. What's that mean? Well, it means that, you know, you take a look at Proverbs. It says, you know, according to, live according to your word. Proverbs says, you know, stay away from loose women. You know, stay away from seductive women that, that speak smooth words to you. You know, their, their pathway is the path to hell. Uh, it, it literally says that, you know, staying away from prostitutes. And in our day, you might say, well, I'm not around prostitutes, so that's not a big issue for me. How about pornography? They didn't have pornography in those days, okay? They didn't have the media and the... And the technology like we have now that at any given moment you can open up pornography on your phone or your laptop or whatever. So, you know, we have to be purposeful uh, in our purity. And that goes for the things that we watch too. Violence and other things on, on movies and television shows. Something should hit your spirit uh, that says, I'm not going to watch that. My son and I were watching the previews for uh, a movie called The Exorcist. And it had a subtitle. And I don't know what the new Exorcist movie is. Uh, I will never watch it because that stuff creeps me out and I think it's demonic. But uh, we were getting ready to watch Oppenheimer together. And he and I, I looked over at him during the previews, which was super scary. He's got his eyes closed and he's got his fingers in his ears. And I was so proud of him at that moment because he recognized, I didn't have to tell him, hey, close your eyes. I did the same thing. I didn't want to see the images that were on the screen because I knew from a purity standpoint, I didn't want those images going into my head. And we talked about it afterwards. I says, isn't that cool though, David? We, we both sensed it in our spirit that this is something we shouldn't be looking at. And that's what it's all about. Okay, verse 15 says, um, it says, I meditate on your precepts. In other words, I think about your law and your ways and I consider it all day long. Okay, I meditate on it. I think about it. Are we thinking about God a lot? Verse 29 says, and this is where you know, we just covered this in the things that God hates, but it says, keep me from deceitful ways. Be gracious to me and teach me your law. So it's very important to a man who's completely committed to not be deceitful in the way that he lives. Let your yeses be yes. Let your noes be noes. And some of you guys are probably in occupations where there is deceit that's built into it. You know, there's, there's salespeople, there are upsailers, there's you know, people that you go in to get your car worked on and they make up lies about things that need to get done so they can make more money. There is a lot of deceit out there in this world. And I hope that as a Christian, uh, you're taking a stand against those kind of things. 
Now I want to jump down to verses 33 through 39. And this is a prayer. Uh, and, and I want you to look at this. I'm not going to read the whole prayer. But this is the ask section in this Psalm 119. This is David saying this. He says, teach me your degree, decrees. Give me understanding. Direct me. Turn my heart to you. Turn my eyes away from sin. Take away my disgrace. So no matter how much willpower and self-discipline we have, if we want to be completely committed, we still have to go to God and ask for strength. We have to ask for God for wisdom. We have to say, God, teach me what you want me to know. Give me understanding. Direct me. Turn my eyes to you. Take my eyes away from things that aren't pure uh, and take away my disgrace. Now, after we've asked, we're going to jump to the I will sections. This is the, what I call the declare sections. These are the I will statements. Okay, it almost sounds like a motivational speech or a you know, motivational book. But starting in verse 44, going through 48, says this. I will always obey your law. I will walk in freedom. I will speak of you before kings. I will delight in your commands and I will meditate on your laws. Okay, so what happens when we tell people we're gonna do something? Well, now we're committed, okay? We've, we've put that out there that, uh, and we're gonna be held accountable. So now some, if you say to somebody, I am going to lose 20 pounds in the next six months, okay? You, let's say you tell your wife that. Well, now she's gonna be checking in with you. Hey, how's the weight loss coming? And it's generally coming like as you're scooping up a second bowl of ice cream or you're going for a, a big bite into that cheeseburger. And you know, sometimes we need to be held accountable. So if we're sitting around other good Christian men and we make a statement like this, I will always obey God's law. I will walk about in freedom. I will speak of God before kings. Okay, that means I'm not ashamed of my faith. I'll talk about God in front of anybody. Okay, so um, as we get ready to go into this study some more, we're going to talk about David uh, next week. Okay, we're going we're gonna to focus more on him. Now, a lot of this is about David today, but we're going to look more specifically at his life and how he lived a life of uh, complete commitment um, to God. So I want to challenge you guys today. Uh, get committed. You know, have the self-discipline that it takes. You know, it's one thing to live a life like you want to and ask God for forgiveness, but that's not living a full life like he wants us to. To be completely committed, it says God is going to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. That's 2 Chronicles 16, 9 that we started off with. Get committed to God. And he's going to strengthen your heart and he's going to make it easier and easier for you to do that each day. Have a great day, guys, and God bless.